Welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. This should be the first video. Um, behind me, we got a Toyota Tacoma 1995. I know they technically started in 96, but this here is a 95 as according to the print date. And we have a 1978 Toyota Chinook pop-up camper get made to this bad girl. So when we first got this thing, it was absolutely destroyed. I'll include some pictures. But the, uh, the frame was completely rusted out. It had been previously patched. It just was disgusting. And there were some holes in the block on the old 3-4 engine. I'll show you guys that later. But uh, I fully rebuilt that. I'm putting a Toyota Camper True Dually full float rear axle underneath it. I just fitted an e-locker. It's a 430. We might have to go to 488s because I do plan on going to 33s. But it has been slow moving progress. I've had this thing for, I don't know, probably going on three years now. It's been a project between my girlfriend and I. And uh, I'm antsy to get it done. She's antsy to get it done. So I've been requested to kind of document this. And I also know that I personally watch videos of campers and fabrication and things of that sort and to give me motivation to work on it so hopefully this will give someone motivation to work on it this is pretty much just going to be a quick overview on everything uh all the progress i've done so far i have a lot more work to do as you guys can tell but uh i just want to kind of fill everyone in with as many pictures and as much story as i can because I've seen one other of these built before. And while they did document it, it wasn't super documented. So I want to go into depth on everything that I'm doing and how I'm doing all this is different anyways compared to what they had done. So again, 1995 Toyota Tacoma in about 3 out of 10 shape. It is really rough. Just about as rough as the shop is, but... We'll get into that. The Toyota Camper was actually complete when I picked it up, which was nice. But uh, we got it out of Portland. And with Portland comes squatters. And with squatters comes people breaking into things and interior just not being what it should be. So couple that off with the fact that from factory, all they used was this probably inch and a quarter uh, plywood mounted straight to the frame to the body mount where the bed would be. And over time, the campers would kind of warp off and uh, kind of distort the camper, distort the seals. So what I went ahead and did was stiffened the heck out of it. This is two by two by eight box tube all the way around. And then the frame, which was completely rusted apart. And again, I'll include pictures of that. This is four by two by three sixteenths. This is overkill for what we're planning on doing with it, but I just wanted to make sure I did it once and did it right. See, I have it fished in all the way up about two feet. And I apologize for the lighting. If these videos gain any traction, I might try to put some money and time into actual video content stuff, but I have since fish plated it with 3 16 pickled mild steel there. We got our rear hangers here. This is all pretty much all just square tubing stuff, which kind of looks pretty basic, but I've been trying to uh, make it look as nice as I can. I know it's all square, but at least it'll look all right. I had to reuse the factory uh, field tank mount. Well, I probably didn't have to, but this seemed like the easiest way for me to keep the factory fuel tank and also move it up. I moved it up. Let me show you this other side here. I'm going to hit my head on the lift about every time. If you can see that frame rail, it sticks about two inches above the frame rail. Factory, those were level with the frame rail, if not lower. So I wanted to get as much clearance as I could, and because I had to redo everything anyways, I had plenty of room to go up with it. So I went up with it. Hindsight 2020, 
I probably should have just built a square fuel cell for this or bought one, but uh, just is what it is. We're here now. So moving on from the frame, which, well, we'll actually touch on this again real fast. I got a cross member here. That's just to, uh, along with these, and that's how Toyota did it. They braced off the whole frame section so that way the frame can't twist from itself but this whole cross member doesn't have to be four inches deep. But I built this specifically in a spot that can store a 33 inch spare tire. It'll clear everything, it'll be perfect. There's that. We have some Chevy 63 leaf springs out of a, uh, I believe these are a 2002 Silverado because I had to just go get some 5 8 bolts because these 9 16 are not uh, adequate. I had to, move up the carrier bearing support to get the correct angle. Everything's great there. I just had this driveline built by a local shop, about 500 bucks, but that included a new carrier bearing, all new U-joints. Unfortunately, I gave them the wrong flange, so I do, in fact, have to change out the yoke, just the end piece that makes the differential. This frame was just completely rusted out. If I haven't included photos already, I will. So you can see that someone before me had already started to repair body mounts in some horrible fashion. I have yet to clean those up, but the frame was just quite destroyed. I have since rust repaired everything I could. That's all new metal there. As far as the camper, again, it was complete but we stripped it out. I will include some photos if I have any. If not, I'll take a quick clip from inside. But it is just going to be a wonderful rig. And I kind of want to start doing these on the regular if this video gains any traction. Again, I want to uh, maybe start building these on the side. But here's that 3-4. I'll include some photos of the rebuild process. This has new pistons, new rings, new crank, new bearings, everything. That is a brand new engine. It runs like a top. So today, I'm going to be working on the bag mounts. These are a, a floating bag style. Meaning that when you flex out your vehicle, which this is intended to be used off-road and moderately aggressively, I guess. You don't want to have your airbags as a limiting strap. So if this was bolted here and here, and your axle your axle flex, flexed out, sorry, it would stretch the bag. So what I've done, and you see I've just recently knocked them off, but there'll be some mounts here, and this bag will sit about here and with the weight of the camper on it and as well as everything in the camper this will be closer to here and these bags stretch out to eight inches so we'll be able to lift the rear end of the rig if we need to we'll be able to level at campgrounds it'll be uh be very cool we want to carry leveling blocks maybe for the front because that'll just be just a little lift kit like it already has but uh, I'm not too sure how much I'm actually going to include. Maybe I'll drop in some extra snippets on this. Again, I've never filmed anything. I'm trying to base this off of other YouTubers and content creators and stuff like that. So I'm sorry if I'm rambling. And uh, enjoy the build. So a quick update for you guys. I've been uh, painting. I bought these U-bolts brand new. And... Uh, I was surprised to find out they were not coated or stainless or anything cool like that. So, been painting. It's pretty cold in Washington right now. It's uh, just had about eight inches of snow, so about 36 degrees right now. Been having the diesel heater cranking. Love that thing. So, I just hit him with Rust Oleum Primer, semi gloss on some things, high gloss on other things. 
Unfortunately, I painted this frame about 10 times. I get a little ahead of myself. So every time I paint it, I then end up grinding around it, turning it all nasty. Before final assembly, which I still got to cut the cab and everything, but that's later date. Before final assembly, I'll recoat everything one more time. Unfortunately, I have to keep pulling this thing in and out of the shop. I got other projects going on, and this is also where we process animals after hunting. And so I, I got to take things out all the time. So I just want to stop it from rusting because if I don't, I end up with surface rust. I mean, you guys get the deal. It's just not the best way to do things. Wish I could just leave it in here, but uh, it is what it is. I'm going to get back to it, fire this thing up. And let it cook. Real low on these. She'll clear out. So I'm not gonna lie, I had a little bit of a go at it today. Uh, didn't get next to anything done. Wanted to have these shock, or sorry, bag mounts in. Ended up having to deal with the fact that I think I have this leaf spring, even though 63s are the same measurement front to rear, I believe they have a torsional twist on them. Because if you look, this shackle is way kicked. And this one's pretty much perfectly straight. So this isn't welded off center either. It's just the shackle. So I'm assuming that I have the leaf spring backwards. And I've just now came to that conclusion, but I've been fighting it all day. Um, I ordered weld washers because I made sure after I went to these five eights that uh, I took multiple different measurements from multiple different points. So that way it'll align correct. But uh, these are both centered that side and this side. They're centered with each other. So I have to have something going on with just this spring. But it uh, it took it out of me today on top of the fact I had to end up painting these U-bolts even though I ordered them brand new I didn't realize that I didn't order coated ones so I had to take those back off paint them that was an ordeal because I ran out of diesel and in Washington right now it is snowing so it is what it is that's why things take this long so thank you hope everyone liked it and uh my goal is to get one of these out at least once a month. Uh, if I do that, I will have this done in time for an annual car show we have up here. So thank you.